Should you be responsible for what you say? That should be an easy question for any adult to answer, but increasingly in the US, it is not. We have better free speech protections in this country than virtually anybody else in the rest of the world. But just because you're free to say what you want without the government coming after you, it doesn't mean that you're free from the repercussions of what you say. Nor does it mean that people have to listen to you or promote what you think. These used to be basic concepts in our country, but Democrats and Republicans are both currently working to push past them for their own ulterior motivations. Your message to platforms like Facebook. They're killing people. And caught in the middle of it all is a little law known as Section 230. Legislation that spells out who is legally responsible for content on the internet was signed into law 27 years ago, the last century. In 1996, only a fifth of Americans had ever booted up the World Wide Web. Section 230 is one of the most misrepresented pieces of legislation in this country, which is weird because one, it's very short, two, it's very simple, and three, you could literally just Google it and read it for yourself. But since it seems the vast majority of Americans have not taken time to do this, I'm going to break it down for you here. Section 230 was a piece of bipartisan legislation that was passed in the 1990s as the internet was first coming about. Essentially, politicians knew this was a new frontier for commerce and they wanted to make sure that it had the ability to grow and flourish. To do that, they needed a legal framework that ensured business owners it was safe to operate online. In case you're unaware, America has a very litigious society. That means that we sue each other a lot. We also have a court system that is really poorly structured to ensure that you aren't wrongfully sued. In many places, if you sue somebody and you lose, you have to pay their legal cost. If you bring a bogus claim and there's no standing to it, you're left with the bill. But in the US, people can sue you even for bogus reasons and you have to pick up the cost of defending yourself. It's way too easy to sue people and way too expensive to defend yourself. And because of that, people are often cautious about going into business. So in trying to establish this new framework for the internet, they decided to pass section 230, which basically told business owners what the first amendment already said. You are responsible for things you write and say online. You're not responsible for things other people write or say online. It's as common sense as they get. And while the First Amendment already pretty much says that, Section 230 just guarantees that if somebody tries to sue a business operating online for bogus reasons, Section 230 will reestablish this and say they can't be sued for things other people have said on their platforms, thus saving the courts a lot of bogus lawsuits and ensuring that small businesses aren't hit with litigation that they can't afford to sustain early on. To summarize, most of these kinds of lawsuits would get thrown out anyways because of the First Amendment, but Section 230 ensures that we don't have to deal with them in the first place. And it turned out Section 230 was a really great law. We've seen the proof in the pudding for the past 25 years. The internet has exploded. We have tons of innovations that have come out online. People are free to exchange ideas and companies are able to operate with the security of knowing that they aren't responsible for things people might write in their comment sections or on their platforms. So why is this all of a sudden controversial? Great question. A few years ago, President Trump, who was no friend of free speech, decided that Section 230 was the root cause of his woes. Platforms like Twitter frequently censored President Trump and ultimately even banned him, and he thought that that shouldn't be allowed. Side note, it absolutely should be allowed. No private business should have to host any speech they disagree with or don't want to promote, much less that of a politician. If the government or a politician can force you to host their speech, do you actually have free speech? Do you actually have freedom at all? I say no. But other Republicans joined President Trump in this assault on Section 230 and basically said that they thought because social media companies were often using algorithms that disfavored conservative viewpoints, that the government should be able to come in and tell these companies how to moderate their content. This is as anti-free speech as it gets. It's a blatant attack on the actual First Amendment that says the government can't tell you what to say and it also can't tell you what not to say. If politicians are going to come in and tell business leaders what kind of speech they can have on their platforms, what kind of speech they have to promote, there is no more First Amendment. To make matters worse, Republicans were joined in this crusade by a number of Democrats, but for very different reasons. Democrats, on the other hand, think that social media companies don't censor enough. They want companies to have to shut down people who push back on their official narratives about things such as COVID-19, climate change, racial justice, and other subjects that violate whatever their official narrative is at the given moment. Democrats don't care about free speech anymore. They have made that abundantly clear over the past couple of years with things like disinformation boards, the Twitter files, and even campaigns by some politicians to get journalists kicked offline. Their end goal is to suppress the flow of information. They want it to be like the old days when there was just a couple media companies that controlled the flow of information, controlled the official narrative, and any independent voices that break with that, they want to shut down. To that end, their work to erode Section 230 makes perfect sense and would accomplish their goals. But Republicans? 
Republicans are out here looking wild. Reforming Section 230 is not only anti-free speech, it's also anti-free market. If you were to get rid of it, guess who could sustain the kind of lawsuits we talked about earlier? large companies like Facebook or Twitter, which is why Facebook has spent a significant amount of money actually campaigning for reforms to Section 230. They don't want competitors. You know who couldn't afford these kind of lawsuits? The small competitors that we are hoping crop up and provide alternatives to the social media platforms these conservatives are so mad at. If you're mad at Facebook and you don't like how Twitter moderates their content, the best hope you have is for other alternatives to spring up in the market that better suit your needs. And they would without government intervention getting in the way. However, if you were to reform or get rid of Section 230, these kind of competitors couldn't afford the cost to enter the marketplace. Republicans like Representative Stubbe have even admitted as such in recent press statements around this law. Furthermore, reforming Section 230 would actually mean that companies moderated their content more, not less, which is what Republicans claim to want. If companies were all of a sudden liable for things that people might write on them, then they would be forced to shut down comment sections, to put a lengthy amount of time before you could send a tweet in place. They would have to have all kinds of protocols to protect themselves. And these kinds of protocols would mean that all of us have less of a voice online, less of an ability to get real-time information as a whole, much worse content moderation practices. Because of this, it would actually be harder for independent voices to break through. Independent journalists, content creators, influencers, all of these people are increasingly able to push back on the mainstream media and the government's narrative. But if you had heavier content moderation practices, that would simply not be the case. Stricter algorithms would also ensure that people who already had large platforms would be the most trustworthy and they would be the most likely to be seen. Whereas again, new upstarts and competitors would have a really hard time earning the trust of social media platforms so that they could post their content. Because of these factors, Republicans who are attacking Section 230 actually play right into the hands of Democrats like Amy Klobuchar. You can amend it and mm -hmm. focus on certain kinds of um, speech misinformation, mm -hmm. disinformation. In a recent piece for the National Review, Senator Rick Santorum actually made this point. And he's not alone in this. Increasingly, a number of actual principled conservatives are starting to realize that reforming Section 230 would be the opposite of what they need to accomplish their goals. James Sosinski, who is a fellow for Americans for Prosperity, has weighed on this. So has the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. Jessica Malugan from the Competitive Enterprise Institute and the James Madison Institute put out an entire report on this topic. Social media companies might have problems, but those are much better problems to deal with than the problems of big government or attacking free speech. And as Senator Santorum again points out, content moderation is actually a pretty good thing. While we should pressure social media companies to have algorithms and moderation practices that are not biased against one group or the other, it's certainly a preferable alternative than scrolling through your newsfeed and seeing ISIS beheading people or porn. We want companies to be able to make smart content moderation decisions that provide all of us with a more enjoyable experience online and even tailor our newsfeed to our interests and needs. Without Section 230, companies would have a whole lot less control over what kind of content they want to promote and moderate. And because of that, you'd probably see services like Yelp reviews go away. If you're leaving a negative review for Yelp, all of a sudden, that company might be able to be sued over what you say about this business. Therefore, they're not going to allow that. At the end of the day, that means consumers lose valuable information streams and the ability to converse with one another. You might also not be able to talk to people about their health concerns online. Say you have a gluten allergy and you discovered that through a series of tests that you ran. You're talking to somebody else online and they are showing similar symptoms and you give them that information, that could be very helpful for them. But without Section 230, if you give them wrongful information, that person could then go sue Google or Facebook or wherever you're chatting about it. De facto, they're not going to let you have those kinds of conversations online without Section 230. Conservatives need to remember that free speech and freedom at large don't always mean that you get your way. But I promise you, not having your tweet get as many likes as you think it should is not as big of a problem as the government coming in and telling you what kind of speech you have to promote or host. No one wants a DMV experience on a social media platform. And that's exactly what we'll end up getting if we let the government take over these companies. Which is exactly what getting rid of Section 230 would do. We've already seen the pressure that the government is putting on platforms like Twitter or Facebook, even with the First Amendment and Section 230 in place. Without Section Section 230, if they could also threaten them with liability should they not comply, that would just get 10 times worse. And even though we might not always like the content moderation decisions Twitter or Facebook makes, I guarantee you we will like them better than whatever moderation decisions the government itself would make. You can't go into your local Burger King and start screaming obscenities without being kicked off the property. Section 230 literally just applies the same concept to online platforms. If you don't like their practices, don't use them or go somewhere else. You don't have a right to something somebody else has built. 
and you can't claim to be a capitalist or support limited government if you think you do. Furthermore, the market is already addressing this problem. These companies are not monopolies, and those that are at the top right now were not at the top a decade ago, nor does it look like they will be in the next decade. Tech has had a major hit in recent years, and companies like Facebook are dwindling. We already see new alternatives popping up, and we also see moves in the market like Elon Musk purchasing Twitter in an effort to make it more free speech. Consumers will vote with their feet. We're already seeing Facebook see that, losers, that, that um, users are not using the site as much and not visiting as often. And we're seeing them go to, and innovation is winning in that other sites, be it they good or bad, are attracting new users. When people sell out their principles for short-term wins, it never works out in their favor. Getting rid of Section 230 and giving the government so much more power over what people say or don't say would have long-term repercussions that I promise you would not go in the favor of Republicans. Section 230 is a very good common sense law that really shouldn't be touched. The government very rarely gets it right, but when it comes to Section 230, they hit it out of the ballpark. You are responsible for what you say, and others cannot be made to promote your speech. These are basic concepts that every adult should be able to get behind. Unfortunately, right now, there are many efforts to take down this law, both through legislation and litigation. So it's important that you educate yourself and raise your voice, because without it, your online experience might look very, very different in just a couple of years.